Welcome to Citizens Forum. I'm John Farkason, and I'm filling in for Jack Etkin today. Uh, my first guest is John Trelevin. John is with the Grumpy Taxpayers. Thanks for coming in today. Thank you, John. Good to see you. I appreciate it. So this is going to be a two-part interview, and it began last October when you did an interview with Jack. And let me see if I've uh, missed anything on the basics that you covered sure. back in November. So f six points. Municipal government is the most important level of government with the least funding options. Absolutely. The current governance model in the CRD with 13 councils and 91 elected representatives, 91 elected officials, leaves, over, uh, leaves the over 415,000 residents very vulnerable and fragile. And I want to come back to that vulnerable and fragile. Um, a primary focus of your organization is the integration of services in the CRD, not necessarily amalgamation. Um, Grumpy Taxpayers seeks transparency, accountability, and predictability uh, in governance. And last but not least uh, is that Grumpy Taxpayers are in favor of taxes, but they get grumpy when they are misspent. Uh, that's right, or uh, and well, misspent in a in a variety of ways. Okay, so did, did I miss anything? Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't okay, know. and what we talked about was you sort of that's the basis there. You can elaborate on any of that with, sure. that you want, but um, going forward, we're going to address some of this dysfunction. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I would say is that o the over overarching part of the first point of the, the importance of municipal government is that. Uh, although we have uh, 13 municipalities and, and the, the islands and whatnot, there's only one economy. Right. The politicians are elected on the basis of 13 different views of life. We all enjoy, by the way, the diversity that's here, from you know, North Sandwich with the ALR to the water. I mean, it's an amazing range of lifestyles you can enjoy. Here. And as you mentioned, you live in Sydney, and yeah. so there's a particular lifestyle that you enjoy yeah. up in Sydney that's quite different from what we enjoy down here in Victoria. And, and that's great. Yeah. But uh, to extend that to having the multiplicity of service delivery agencies is, the, is what we question. Because we're not talking about political amalgamation. No. Nope. But service. Okay. So, um, in our emails back and forth, we talked about how to get from this, uh, as you, I'll quote you here, uh, dysfunction at every turn, to, and I'll also quote you here, to a more integrated and environmentally friendly uh, service delivery and planning model uh, for this global urban center of 415,000. Well, I think that we, we should, all across this region, be taking strength from uh, the adversity that the climate issue represents. You know, the world is having to adjust to a new set of paradigms that weren't there before. Mm -hmm. And as you know, the, the 13 councils and the CRD have board have declared a climate crisis. Fine. Uh, climate emergency, I'm sorry. Worse than a crisis. Uh, well, this is mo maybe a time for people to look at how we've been doing things for the last 52 or 53 years around here and figure out ways that can be less carbon intensive. But to look at it collectively as opposed to... Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, because to look at it uh, in a fractured way is to increase the carbon cost of the solution. Uh, if you have 15 fire departments, the chances are if you did a carbon calculation, you would find that was a much more expensive way to deliver fire services. A much more uh, greenhouse gas emission intensive way. All of that. Okay. Uh, and the same is true for a number of other services. and, and uh, uh, I would I would urge in the climate emergency, and, and we did speak at the, at the CRD board, to declare a governance emergency and see what could be done in a very profound way, and it's not easy, none of this is easy, uh, to reduce Greater Victoria's carbon footprint. Okay, yes, you can ban straws and you can ban shopping bags and stuff, I got that, that's okay. But to do it at a more, to, to, to reduce the carbon footprint at a more profound level. Business as usual, it, we are told, will not work any longer. Well, okay, let's let's do a profound look at how we govern these uh, the, the 415,000 people, how we share our dreams, and choose a car less carbon-intensive way of doing it. So I imagine this would apply to all of the large issues that we face as a city of. Uh, 415,000. Well, it wouldn't, no, it wouldn't d be just the, you know, the climate emergency, the cl climate crisis. It would al also extend to homelessness and a whole variety of other well, uh, yeah, I'm, large I'm, I'm, problems. I'm, I'm absolutely, including, of course, transportation. 
Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, the point I made the last time, we are one economy. I mean, 13 communities and stuff, but we're one economy. But we can't leave transportation planning to the hands of 13 sovereign organizations that then say, well, I don't like this one, I like that one. For how many years was um, the Mackenzie interchange upgrade blocked by resistance in Saanich? Mm -hmm. The fact that that compromised a good portion of the economy of Greater Victoria and, by the way, pumped billions of millions of tons of carbon into the environment, and we, we, we can't afford to do that anymore. That's that, that's my point, and and um, on any of the big issues. On any of the big issues, we we share the problems. We've got to share the solutions, mm -hmm. in a manner which uh, allows the voter the opportunity to weigh in and say, yes, we want a common solution. Um, you will recall, perhaps two election cycles ago, something like sixty-eight percent of the voters in Greater Victoria voted for a study of one kind or another on the on service integration actually on amalgamation. Well, it didn't get very far and we don't need to go into that again. But now with the climate emergency, people have got to look at different ways of doing stuff beyond plastic bags. Yeah, it's interesting because when you bring up the climate emergency, all of a sudden I don't have it now in a different silo. I now have it like right. It's, it's, the over, it's, it's an overarching. The world is round. Yeah, the world's round. And uh, that demands a whole new governance structure uh, to address. Yes, and, and regrettably, so. and it's not the fault of anybody in, involved, in, and as you know, we pay a great deal of honor to the, to the people who stand for election at the municipal level and serve. Uh, but the mechanisms don't really allow them to work all that well together, and the sewer project, and the, 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 we're waiting for the provincial government to opine on, on South Island transportation as a voter, I didn't vote for Colin Plant. No. He is the senior municipal official in the community. How can I be, and by the way, I do, of course, contribute to taxes all the way no. along. How, why do I not have an opportunity to vote for the chair of the CRD and debate the vision for the community? Mm -hmm. We need to do that. We're, we, we are a democracy. So how, how are you going to come at this? Uh, I mean, that for me is very much, uh, takes you down the path of amalgamation, and yet you seem to have, um, not restricted yourself, but you seem to have this emphasis on service integration. And I'm just not clear yep. how, and then you overlay it with this climate emergency. Which to me provides a perfect opportunity for some original thinking, right? Okay, so, and that would look like? Well, uh, one of the things we've advocated for a long time is for Greater Victoria to take its place at the table of the largest cities in Canada. We're not there because Little Victoria is 89,000 people and uh, the way the CRD is, is constituted, I mean, uh, Colin Plant does a wonderful job, but he's, he's only given his job by the board one year at a time. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, that's difficult, right? Well, it's up to us to organize ourselves in such a way that, that a spokesman, an elected official, it doesn't necessarily mean amalgamation, there are all kinds of ways of doing it otherwise, is recognized for an extended period of time as the chief magistrate of one kind or another for the 415,000 people and sit at that table. So that's great, that's over he yeah. <coughs> here. We <coughs> here we are over here, so walk me through getting to there. Just, you know, one potential scenario. Well, I think, I think one potential scenario is uh, for the the CRD board, which is rep which is responsible for the functioning of this lar one of the largest cities in Canada, to take a look at their own act and do a complete review, dispassionate review of it was set up 52, 53 years ago. How is it working today? And suggest legislative changes to the province to bring the aspirations of the citizens and the functioning of the uh, service delivery and, and the political level in, into alignment. It's not there now. Well, it's interesting because um, I forget, I guess it was in the last show, you said something along the lines of, hey, grumpy taxpayers, our primary job is to ask questions. Yes. However, when Mayor David Screech stepped forward and said, how about some answers from you guys? You were right there with, you know, with a lot of answers as well. 
And so this is your an one of your answers to how we're we, going to get we from here to there. We have said for a long time, it, it is unfair to the current elected officials to be running the CRD, regional governance in the province, based on a 52-year-old act. Mm -hmm. Surely there needs to be a root and branch study based on the challenges the economy, the, 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 the community faces today, which are materially different than they were 52 years ago, and let the chips fall where they may. But in terms of letting the chips fall where they may, who is going to step forward and take that risk, uh, not knowing where the chips are going to fall? Where they, they're not going to know whether or not they're going to have a job following whatever it well, is they implement. Okay, so what, what, what I would say is that uh, any, it takes courage to be a strong political leader. Okay. And we need courageous people to stand up and say, is there, it, it, what's the reason there isn't a transportation plan? What's the reason that we have, I don't know, business licenses, you name it. And, and uh, what, what, dis, what dismays me and, and some of us in, in Grumpy is the standoff attitude that the province of British Columbia has taken over the years towards municipal government. Uh, and I can't figure it out because, as I keep saying, the economy of British Columbia is only a statistical uh, compilation of what happens at the municipal level. Right. And uh, so we need some, you know, good, courageous leaders to stand up and say this is... Now, let's face it, we're having this meeting against the background of what could be a very fundamental change because both Victoria and Saanich are going through a process right. which could yield substantial changes in, in both, and if those two... So this is, this is the Citizens Forum that yeah. was struck uh, by the two largest municipalities yeah. to look at uh, amalgamation. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And that, that took a lot of effort, and, and it's going to take a lot of courage, and you, we don't know which way it's going to go, but at least the debate is being held, and that's good. And I'm just suggesting, and we have suggested, that the, for the broader community, CRD board needs to encourage the same, not an amalgamation discussion, but a total look at how things are being delivered and whether they can be delivered. For example, there has never been in the history of this community a full-blown exercise that, that would mimic an earthquake hits tomorrow at 10 in the morning at Sandwich. So emergency preparedness, all, all the muscle is there, but there's never been an opportunity for all those emergency services, all those first responders and others to figure out how they're going to work together. So John, we've just got a couple minutes left yeah. here. So I know that you're uh, nonpartisan and uh, don't back Absolutely. any candidates, yeah. but as you know, we have a by-election coming up here in Victoria sometime early in the new year. And um, what, would a, what, would a, what would the ideal grumpy taxpayers candidate look like? What would they say? Oh, I would think that the uh, the ideal uh, the ideal candidate would um, besides being courageous. Yeah, you know, courageous, financially literate. Okay. Uh, I mean, I if you consider how the budget processes work around here, we, you know, you, you can't have too many people who understand how to read a balance sheet. Uh, collaborative and uh, tireless, because to provoke change in this environment, in any environment takes nothing but energy right? Uh, and um, a commitment to uh, the life and livelihood of every citizen and including beyond the borders frankly of, of, of greater of, of, of Victoria because we rub up against the 13 municipalities we work together all the time we've got to work together better right and uh, a commitment to do that and if you, if you look at uh, recent history, I mean, give, give uh, Lisa Helps credit for pulling together the South Island Prosperity Partnership. Yeah, that's, a, that's had a big impact, she, I know. It, it is an excellent organization, yeah. and, and she did that, and collabor yeah. with, collaborating with other mayors, that was a need she saw, and she, she led, and it's happened, and it's, it's producing great results for this. this I know, and it was just, you know, a sole focus on we don't have 13 economies, we have one, one. We have one regional economy. Yeah. Yeah. John, that's about wraps up our time for today, and I really want to thank you uh, so much for coming in today. Well, a pleasure. We're entering our fifth year. We're okay. looking for more volunteers, okay. people who care about their community and prepared to ask questions from time to time. Super. Thanks for coming in. Thank you so much. John.